107. We covered a lot in this Nugget video, and i got to tell you, whether you're starting off with the basic tabular list or doing something like that, uh, make sure that you just know and understand how tabs work and check out that Nugget video. Also, we saw how we can insert a table, not only just by clicking and inserting the number of rows and columns, we can use drawing tools and draw them the way that we want, put the cells where we want, just by clicking and dragging that little draw tool. We also saw that we can modify the structure itself, the size of the table, how many columns, how many rows. We can insert more rows. We can even delete rows, same way that you saw us insert. And then modifying the design itself, color. Uh, do you want to add shading? Do you want to add uh, something a little bit different from the header? Do you want to use some of the design styles that are built into Word 2007? Not a problem. We can do that. And then finally, we took a look at how we convert text into a table. Hey, whether it's Notepad, WordPad, maybe even text that you've gotten from a, a comma-separated uh, environment, you can then insert that into a table utilizing this tool. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 Referencing and Indexing. Now, anytime you find yourself faced with a document that's more than one or two pages long, let's say it's hundreds of pages long, how do you manipulate and navigate through that? Well, one of the things we can do is reference and index things so we can use things like tables of contents, with the index to tell us which page number something is on. So we're going to start scratching the surface on how to deal with these large documents in this first nugget. There's quite a bit to referencing and indexing. In this first nugget, we're going to take a look at table of contents, table of figures, how we do indexing, and even how to use cross-referencing if you want to take one subject and kind of index it over to something else. Like I said in the introduction to this nugget, anytime you have a long document, you want to make it easy for people, whether it's online or whether it's in printed form, to navigate around your huge document. So, in my case, mine's not super huge. I only have nine pages here. But I do have the history of instruments. And let's say you've got some big report or some other document. We're going to probably have headings and subheadings. You know, in this case, I went ahead and preloaded my history of instruments the last time you saw this in the other, uh, the other nugget. It, it was just a lot of text. Well, now I've added some headings like ancient history. And notice I use my styles here to make that a heading one. And then I've got the Persian and Greeks, which is a heading two. And then if I scroll down a little bit more under the Middle Ages here, keep scrolling. Ah, here we go. Here's a heading three. So if I scroll down here and see there's my heading three. So I've added these kind of uh, points to my document. And let me scroll here to the top here. And what you're going to want to do to really help these people navigate to specific sections, you can put in a table of contents. Now if you print the document, what's going to happen is it's going to tell you what page number these particular headings or topics are. If it's online or in electronic format, that's even better. That means you can actually link to these headings and subheadings, and so that way people that are looking at it can actually jump directly to wherever that is into this huge document that you have. That's pretty cool. So what you want to do is go ahead and utilize what Word 2007 has already built in, and that is using headings. Heading threes, twos, ones. Uh, that paragraph style that you're utilizing. That's built in. Now you can manually go in and use your own placeholders. I gotta tell you something. That, that's a real big pain. But there are certain people in certain type of documents that want to do that. Now where do we do all this? Chris, you've been talking about this table of contents. How do we do this? Well, if you look up here on our ribbon, we have a tab called References. If I click on that, here's where we're going to spend all of this video talking about all of these indexing and the tables and the things that we can use. Here we can see the very first one is a table of contents. So, all you need to do is click on the down arrow and it's going to say automatically, ah, do you want to use one of our automatically built tables that use the uh, contents? It'll give you that with the heading. Or do you want to use it where it says table of contents? And so now you know it's labeled this way and it's using a, you know the heading styles. And you know either 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 one of these, by the way, can you know be obviously used. And you can obviously manipulate it if you want by using the insert table of contents. And then here's the manual table. Now if you do a manual, you're going to have to actually say, okay, well what am I using for my level one, my level two, and level three and chapter titles? What am I going to do? This you have to create by yourself. 
just understand it's available we're not going to get into it in this nugget but it is available to you if you want to change something I typically just use the automatic capabilities now if we click on insert table of contents it'll allow you to manipulate it just a little bit now notice it grays out because we're in the table of contents area the index table of figures and table of authorities those are all over you know here in the background we'll take a look at those in a, in a, in a minute so we come in here and you got your print preview and it says okay what what's going to happen is it's going to do a heading one or in this case word 2007 has already seen that I have a title and headings and other things like that it says alright what how do you want this to work you got your heading one and then the page number and then you can go down here and say well do you want to show the page numbers I can turn them off uh, if you're not using this or in a print version by the way if you use print make sure you use the page numbers or if I want I can show the page numbers but I don't want to right align them instead I want them to bump right up against the actual headings themselves so I can take that off and you notice heading one is now this page title here's your page two is here's your page so the page numbers you wouldn't see heading two heading three it would say you know Persian Greeks three you know Muslim five you know something like that but I usually say no write a line it's easier it draws your eyes and it's actually a lot cleaner on your document then the tab leader we saw this in our nugget on tabs is the, just that leader information that splits the difference between the end of your text and the beginning of the or the end of the tab stop here and I can change those by simply clicking down here maybe I want to do an underline or you can also come down here under the general settings and say well with the formats do you want to just use from the template which means you're using you know this kind of look or I can choose from some of the neat little ways that we have pre-built like classic oh that looks kinda of neat and I can go to fancy Ooh. or I can get modern and, and this just changes the way that it's presented on your page in your table of contents now you can also show levels if I don't want to show let's say I've got heading levels down to six or eight well you don't want your table of contents to go down that much we only want to show the first three levels the fourth levels or maybe two levels you can do that so if I notice when I take the show levels three when I when I remove that and I go down to two it says up oh, no you just remove that and so now you don't see it but if I go up to level three it's like yeah I'll show you heading three it's, it's right there okay so we can do that now I like uh, distinctive is one of my favorites and so I'm gonna use that and again you can see if I drop off any one of those it's gonna move that and say nope you're not gonna show those page numbers we'll use the tab leaders it all looks good by the way if you take this web document or make it a web document like in front page or on your SharePoint sites you can actually it'll just create these into hyperlinks and it'll just say do you want to use hyperlinks instead of page numbers so when you translate that online you know this will obviously take you to a different HTML page uh, of that document versus just you know having it scroll or you can have it scroll all on one page all uh, abilities that you can use if you're going to use it on the web options if we click on options this just says alright do you want to build your table of contents from your existing styles so right now we're use we got balloon text we got heading four we got all these things it says heading one will be table of content level one which means it's all the way up to the left right here heading two will be TOC level two now heading three is going to be on three but if I want I can move it and I can say well let's go move it over to TOC level four which means it's going to bump instead of heading one here heading two here where my mouse is and heading three here heading three would be over here somewhere so you can do that um, you can also do the table entry fields which allows you to see these in a table format um, you know again not, not, nothing you really uh, need to worry about outline levels again this is whether you know you want to use the table of content level in an outline format or not in this case we say yes okay so we can do that I'll go ahead and click OK and now it's notice it now moves heading three over a little bit more so now you're moved all the way over to this side so now we go alright sounds good we've got our table of contents if you notice my cursor I placed it at the beginning here so that's where it's going to insert it I click OK and bada bing bada boom here we go history of instruments ancient history Persians and Greeks Japanese Chinese cultures and the following page numbers Now you'll notice something though 
All it did was insert it onto page one here and then push everything back. Well, that's typically not the way you want it to show up. So what I'm going to do is right here at the beginning of the history of instruments, we saw this when we did page formatting, I'm going to hit a control enter, which is going to give me a manual page break. Remember that hard page break we talked about in the page formatting nugget? So I hit control, I hit enter, and boom, there we go. So now it's on page two. But here's the problem. If you scroll up here, it still says the history of instruments is on page one. I'm sorry, that's not true. Well, how do I do this? I update my table of contents. Now, when I click on this, it's going to ask me an interesting question. Do I want to update the page numbers only or update the entire table? Well, what does this mean? Well, update the page numbers means only the existing headings will get their page numbers updated. So if I go ahead and click OK, boom, there it went. Two. And now it's on page two, and it goes all the way down to Modern Times is on page six. Now here's where it gets interesting. Notice it only did the page numbers. It didn't do anything here. Where would that make a difference? Well, let's say we go down to Modern Era here. So I'm going to scroll down a lot down here. Here's Modern Times. And let's say that we want to break this up a little bit. And I'm going to come down here and say Modern Times. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter here. And I'm going to insert. I'm going to go back up here to Home and change my style. I'm going to insert a heading 2, so I click on that, and I'm going to type in the Big Band Era. Okay, so Big Band Era, um, when I was in music classes and played instruments, I loved the Big Band Era. So now we're going to say Big Band Era, that's a heading 2. And then down here, we're going to start talking about some of these big band era people. Maybe some of the famous uh, instrumentalists and conductors of the big band. So I go ahead and hit enter. And of course, that means I'm going to move down here to a heading three. Or I can just go ahead and type the person's name, like Glenn Miller. Famous uh, trombone player. Um, he actually uh, died in World War II, but uh, one of the best, uh, one of the big, everyone knows Glenn Miller's name in big band. So I can, of course, highlight this and come up here and say I'm going to make that a heading three. So there's Glenn Miller, right? And let's say we add another one. My favorite all time is Benny Goodman. Benny Goodman was a clarinet player and part of the reason why I started playing the clarinet back in the, my band days. So there we go, heading three. Okay, so now I've added two heading threes, Glenn Miller, Benny Goodman, and the big band era. So there's a heading two. Now if I scroll all the way up here to the, to the top, look at look at this nothing's changed. So if I come over here now to my references and I want to update my table and I update page numbers only, all it's going to do is update the page numbers. But now instead, if I click update entire table, watch this. Okay. And now you say, Chris, I don't see anything. Well, I got to scroll down. Ah, here we go. Modern times, big banderas on page six, Glenn Miller and Benny Goodman. Now, so far, you're thinking, wow, that's okay, that's kind of cool. We got the table of contents, but you notice anytime I roll my mouse over here, what does this allow me to do? Well, let's say I want to go to the Muslim influence of the Middle Ages. So I take my mouse and I roll over it and it says, in my current document, hit Control and click to follow the link. Control changes my hand a little to a pointer. I click, boom, jumps me down right to Muslim influence pretty sweet, isn't that? So if I want to find certain places, I can just do that in the table of contents. So now let's say I want to go to the Renaissance, to the Masters. Control, click, boom, now I'm down on the Masters. So there is my table of contents. And this allows me, of course, to come in here and maneuver. And if it was printed out, if I scroll all the way up, it would tell me what page number the, on the printout I would go to to see ancient history for Persians and Greeks or Japanese and Chinese cultures. So we can do that. Now, the next thing I can do, of course, is obviously if I want to, I can hit uh, enter here. And then up here, I can add uh, uh, maybe this and just say, well, now I want to add um, uh, you know, some standard text here. So if I go just normal text, I can say this is my table of contents. doesn't affect anything. Now we can go ahead and add a table of figures. So the table of contents is set up on my heading. But remember, if I scroll all the way down here, 
you'll notice that I've added a couple of figures down here. Now, in order for the table of figures to you know, work, I need to describe these as figures. So this needs to be a captioned as a figure, and so does this. By the way, this is Antonio Stradivari, the creator of the Stradivarius violins and the cellos. And then down here are what are known as sack butts. Yes, I know. What an interesting uh, term right there, right? Well, um, that's these are obviously, if you look at them very carefully, these are the grandfathers of the modern-day trombone. Okay, let's start off with selecting right here my picture tools. Now, if I need to, I can come over here to the format, and you know, I can add my, my shapes and do the things that I want to do. But to make this add a caption,